to uh, bring the, the greetings of the, all the churches of Jerusalem, of the Holy Land. Uh, these days I receive uh, beautiful echoes from our parishes, our community, our religious community, holy places, seeing all a uh, lot of youth, uh, rivers of youth coming and entering you know, all the places in our churches, visit our community, listening, sharing, a uh, little bit crazy, uh, but to, and also to, to be under the sun and this weather for so long, we have to be crazy a little bit, but to follow Jesus, we have to be crazy, so welcome to the heaven. So once again, on behalf of the Church, the Church of Jerusalem, of the Holy Land, happy to see uh, this rare group of uh, youth, more several thousand of youth, you know, in uh, our land after years of silence because of the pandemic, is a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful beginning. I was asked to say something about the Beatitudes, but we already heard a lot about the attitudes will be so very short. First of all, I want to say very simply one thing, that whatever you can do, we will never understand the attitudes. The attitudes, the, uh, the mentality, the rational the attitudes, is totally different from our rationals, from our mentality, from our way of thinking. And there is no way we can understand. We don't want to be uh, the, the mentality of the world, to be poor in spirit, to be me, to be persecuted, a sign of weakness. We don't want to be weak, we want to be strong, strength is the language. Language depends on us also our way of thinking. We don't want to be, in order to understand what is written here, we need, first of all, change our hearts. Uh, we need conversion because the, the mentality of this age of gospel, once again, is different from our way of thinking and, well, and the way we are taught to think. And the only way to change our hearts, there is only one way, to meet Jesus. Uh, it happens, I think, to all of us, to, sooner or later, that an encounter of everything, anything uh, that in our life that change the way we think, the change, the way we see the, the, the things. It can be the love for one person, the meeting with another person, a speech, as we heard, and so on, something that uh, enlightens us in our heart and out of a sudden what was strange before becomes understandable. What was not acceptable becomes acceptable. I am Franciscan and St. Francis says that he was, uh, he hated, hated the lepers. At the time the lepers were one of the plague of the society. He hated them and was also the time of Jesus was forbidden to touch them, to, to, to go with them. And after he met Jesus, after his conversion, he saw totally different. He said, if you want to be Franciscan, you have to go to the lepers. You have to, uh, you have to love them, to serve them, to touch them, and so on. So, uh, first, so we want to understand the, the Beatitudes, we can study whatever you want, how, how much you want. You can struggle how much you want, but it will never work. You first need to convert your heart. The conversion is a grace. It's not the fruit of your work. So the first thing you have to ask to have, to have this blessing, this grace in your, in your life, to meet, to meet Jesus through the scriptures, through the sacraments, as we heard. And also, since you are here in our land, through this land. You didn't come here just to have a special pilgrimage. 
cultural pilgrimage or to uh, understand better the scriptures. The main reason is to, is to meet Jesus, the humanity of Jesus. Jesus is not, as we heard, a narrative, it's not an idea, it's not a message, it's not something written in a book, it's a person. He was born here, died, and risen here. In these places, in this land. So through this land, we call this land a kind of eighth sacrament. Because it helps us to understand better and to meet, to encounter the man who changed the life of the world. And we want also to, he, to change our life. Second consideration I want to say that we heard is not a moral, uh, uh, moral uh, teaching. It's life. And uh, this is not a fruit of our struggle, of our efforts. Become meek, become pure in spirit, pure in art, and so on. It's not something that we can achieve with our efforts. It's a grace that needs our agreement, needs our yes, of course. But it's a grace that's coming from God. When there is this love for Jesus strong in us, then we can also understand the meaning of being me, poor in heart, or be able to bear persecutions and see the persecution not something as the end of our life, but a way to say yes to Jesus. And uh, the third consideration, the last consideration I want to say, is that uh, this page the gospel, we always create misunderstanding. It's a risk also sometimes in our, sometimes in our church to find compromise, to try to not to please the world, but to in order to conquer them, to to use the language the world understands. The world will never, the mentality of the world will never understand this page of the gospel. Never. It is impossible to have a compromise between the Beatitudes <laughs> of not misunderstanding. We love the world because the world, the creation, the humanity, everything is the fruit of love of God. We have to love that. But not to accept the mentality of this world. We cannot, we can change only what we love. Only love can change things. So we have to love them. To love them doesn't mean to accept everything. Love, also, love should be capable to, capable to say yes and no. So we say we love you even if you don't accept what you are doing. We, we end we want to show you a different way of, of life and a way of happiness which the attitudes present. We can translate the word blessed also with happy. Happy are those who are happy are those who are because this presents the way of happiness, but happiness not according to the world, happiness according to the life in God. Because God created us uh, for, for the life, the plenitude and the fullness of life. And I conclude my prayer for all of you after this experience, I think tiring experience, but I hope also beautiful experience of encounter with the other communities, with our church, through the other places also with a new way to read the gospel. My prayer for all of you is that you will bring a little bit of the experience of Holy Land in wherever you are going, in your, in your, in your country, in your house, and, and bring also the experience you have made here of Jesus and say, yes, Jesus is risen. And we met him. We cannot, we cannot you don't find in the Gospel in any description of the resurrection. You can only meet the risen one. 
like the women, like the disciples and so on. So my prayer for you is that when you go back to your country, you can say, yes, we also have been in our land, we saw the empty tomb, and we met the reason why. Thank you. May the Lord bless you.